In the days leading up to the July 4th holiday, U.S. President Donald J. Trump renewed attacks on the media in a series of tweets. They also come on the heels of an alarming recruitment video from the National Rifle Association. We get a response from preeminent historian and author Gerald Horn, who connects Trump election with Britain's vote to Brexit from the European Union. They reflect the fact that the United States is being forced to retreat from its previous role of global preeminence, and Britain also is being forced to retreat. Horn argues America's weakened position internationally is that at least partially responsible for what's behind the growing conflicts between Trump and the media. It reflects this tension and conflict within the U.S. ruling elite, not least as a result of the fact that the United States is not able to throw its weight around in the global community like it once did, which obviously is going to shrink the super profits that U.S. imperialism has garnered from being the global policeman. And this is creating tension and conflict, and there's no end in sight. Horn also responds to the widely panned recent NRA recruitment video. The only way we stop this, the only way we save our country and our freedom is to fight this violence of lies with the clenched fist of truth. What's well, a very dangerous video. Uh, it represents this unvarnished right-wing sentiment that should be disturbing to us all. To be candid, it reflects a strain of neo-fascism that is quite chilling and questions the NRA's silence over the police killing of Philando Castile, a registered gun owner who was telling police he had a firearm when he was shot and killed. I think that that reminds us that when gun control became a live issue in the 1960s, one of the reasons was that the Black Panther Party had come into the legislative chambers in Sacramento armed, which was legal, and this led to Republican and indeed NRA-supported efforts to curb the wielding of arms. But now, with the decline, if not the disappearance, of the Black Panther Party, the NRA is revealing its true agenda, which is arming the white right so that if the U.S. government veers from a political line that they disagree with, they can lead an armed rebellion. And now I'm not just making that up. That's what they tell us openly. The common thread that ties in these different things we've been talking about is this desire in conservative, mostly white America to go back to a time, to go back to this previous time when we were dominant, when, you know, um, people stayed in line, people knew their role, like minor minorities knew their role. Um, you know, there, there wasn't this chaos that started started coming about in the 60s. Everything was good. We had a middle class, you know, we were jobs, you know, like Trump's saying, make America great again. How do you respond to this idea of, of going back to the things that, things the, the way they were in the past? I would like to say that turning back the clock is impossible. But as a historian who is quite familiar with the fact that, for example, in the late 18th century and early 19th century, the French colonialists abolished slavery in Martinique in light of the ongoing turmoil that was gripping what is now Haiti. The fact of the matter is, is that after abolishing slavery, they then brought it back. So historically, it is possible to turn back the clock, particularly if folks who are going to be victimized do not have a firm and clear understanding of what's going on. And I'm afraid to say that there is some of that. Uh, for example, we're marking the birthday of the United States, July 4th, 1776, when the Declaration of Independence was promulgated. Now, myself and a few other historians have suggested that the birth of the United States was driven in no small measure as a reaction to Britain moving towards abolition of slavery, in, as reflected in Somerset's case in June 1772, and also as a reaction to the so-called Royal Proclamation of 1763, in which London expressed a distaste and a displeasure for continuing to attack Native Americans and taking their land so they could turn it over to the likes of land speculators like George Washington. And rather than see their 
fortunes imperiled, these colonists, these settlers rebelled and kicked out London and created the first apartheid state. Now, there is enormous evidence to support that proposition I've just articulated, but even in progressive circles, you do not necessarily hear that kind of argument articulated, which means that folks today are ill positioned to push back against these neo-fascist strains as embodied in the Trump coalition and also as embodied in that NRA video that you've made reference to. For The Real News, this is Jessel Noor.